Welcome back to the program. You're listening to Sacred Space here on CJUM 101.5 FM out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I hope you're enjoying my Skype visit with Maria Heller, the voice that roars. You can check out her show at maria.net. So without further ado, let's get back to my Skype visit with Maria. Enjoy. Well, you know, I was on a young man's show about six months ago. Fabulous guy. His name was uh, Andre. Don't remember his last name. I think it was GRC Radio. And we were talking about everything from chemtrails to you name it. And you know what? They took him right off the air after that show with me. Wow. I wanted to get into this with you, actually, because this is the one thing that I'm, I'm not still quite clear on. And you said it, and that's chemtrails. My understanding is so far, whether it's a spraying to test new antibiotics or to test new diseases, um, is that what they are? I believe what their main goal is, is using it in unison with HARP and other mind control programs they have, like our you know, cell phones, cell phone towers, microwave towers, etc. I believe what they're doing with the chemtrails is literally changing the frequencies above our heads, uh, let alone dripping down all these toxins, not just on humans, but on the land, on the trees, on everything. And what happens is because the main ingredients, aluminum, barium, and strontium, uh, you look at all these wildfires we have now and how hard they are to put out, and for good reason. The, the trees and everything is coated with all this fire retardant material. Uh, and, you know, there used to be so many other ways people said, oh, they're just trying to use it to cool down the planet or to block out UFOs. And I'm like, be realistic, okay? <laughs> you can't block out a UFO with a spray in the air, it's just no. not going to happen. Uh, so I think the number one reason is to amp up their mind control, which they know is failing on the planet, which is probably why they're spraying so much more. It looks like all their systems of control are falling apart at the seams, so to try to salvage it, they're amping it up. But it doesn't really matter what they do because they've already lost. They just don't know it. Yeah, see, that's how I've always saw it, too, is that they're in their last death throes and right. grabbing at what they can before their end game. Well, but the joke, the final joke will be on them because they will, like I said, just become recycled energy. Yeah. I wanted to ask whether this makes sense to you or not because for me, one of the reasons why I like to do radio is because of the radio waves themselves. I think that there's more to radio waves than we understand. And for me, when I have the guests on the show, to me that's an energetic release that's going out and because it's a radio wave, it goes and goes and goes and off into the universe it goes. And mm -hmm. maybe it attaches itself to the collective conscious or the collective unconscious. Does well, that make that's sense? one way of looking at it. You know, I look at it as radio or even my internet show. We're putting it out to the universe. It's reverberating well beyond our universe. We are yeah. educating beings far, far away. You know, my, my guides have let me know that I don't really have to do my show, but they said, we'd really miss it if it was gone because you crack us up. <laughs> so I tell people that I probably have more listeners out of body than I do in bodies. <laughs> That's if right. I give them a chuckle or two, why not? Yeah. I enjoy doing what I do. Yeah. And if I didn't, I wouldn't do it. That's so important. And I think from the uh, just a few shows that I've listened to a year is you, you really get that. That really well, comes yeah, through. And I don't believe anybody should do anything they don't enjoy doing. What's yeah. the point? You know, and I tell people that a lot. You know, if you spent this whole day doing shit for other people and didn't do one thing for yourself, that's a wasted day in your life. Yep, I feel the same way. Yep. Right, it's your life. You're not here to, you know, you're not here for all the Miss America reasons, you know, to take care of others and all these other altruistic reasons or alibis for people, you know, living outside their life instead of inside their life. Yeah. I always thought if I was ever going to do a memoirs, it would be uh, living a king's ransom on a pauper's wage. 
Oh, my father used to say, living like a general on a private salary. <laughs> Same difference. Yeah, nice. Right. I like that. Yeah, I mean, when, when I hitchhiked to Mexico, I had less than $100. I had like 89-something because I just worked for Greenpeace for a month, and that's what I made in a month, $89. And my friend had about 160 or 70 bucks, And we were gone for over nine months in Mexico and could have stayed longer. And we ended up in... Uh, on an old church with this uh, Mayan Indian Catholic priest, Padre Albino. Interesting man. But uh, I am so in agreement that you have to live your life the way you see it. And I think that's what makes things like your show work. Because people really feel that, they get a sense of that, and maybe even because they're not living it as much as you are, that's why they need you because you give them that fix of real reality Mm -hmm. well people do say that if they go on vacation i missed my maria fix for the day the other thing is a lot of people tell me even when i do lectures you know that i say things they want to say but they're afraid to say ah yeah 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 i have no problem with that i just call it the way i see it you know that's the way my parents raised us we were one of the few that actually were encouraged with self-expression. Well, yeah, know? I was kind of the opposite where we were just left alone. Uh, my father was a mother especially, you know, speak what's on your mind. You know, my father taught us when we were young, always question authority, especially authority. Uh, I mean, this is the way we grew up. So, you know, that coupled with being women, being Italian, being New Yorkers, I understand the New York, typical New York personality is way different than most because we are very out there. You have to be in order to survive in a city with so many millions of people. Uh, Being a New Yorker, how do you feel of 9-11? Well, I knew immediately 9-11 was bullshit. As soon as I saw it, I used to, you know, when I was a young girl, I worked in downtown Manhattan. I mean, I was in and out of the World Trade Center all the time. My friend's husbands built the World Trade Center. So I knew, you know, I knew more about those buildings. That was like the pride and glory of every New Yorker for decades. Uh, And immediately, you know, put that together, my, my knowledge of architecture, controlled demolitions and everything like that, because I was married to an architect once. Uh, You know, as soon as I looked at it, you know, my psychic sense immediately gave me a shot in my stomach, and I said, "Uh uh-oh, please let me be wrong. I just knew intuitively that what we were seeing on the screen was bullshit. Yeah. Two days later, or three days later, when I was able to get back on the air, is when we started tearing apart the official timeline. Why do you think so many people, I don't like to batch people, but when people like who seem to be intelligent, and I'll use this person as an example, somebody like Bill Maher, who I don't know, but I watch a lot of his comedy sketches, I watch his uh, his shows, who seems to, to have the line on religion, seems to have an understanding of certain things of the Illuminati and that kind of thing, but when somebody mentions 9-11 being a fraud, he'll just freak out. So, using that as an example, why do most, it seems, Americans, why would they will not see that as a, quote, false flag operation? Well, so many reasons. One, first and foremost, willful ignorance. Second, you have cognitive dissonance. It's too ugly for people to wrap their heads around. Then you have the lazy and the legitimately stupid. (laughs) <laughs> who don't want to do the homework, who just want to believe everything their government tells them. Because, you know, truth, once you know truth, you're then compelled to act. And yeah. most people don't want to act. It's like, be, you know, learning about the environment and no longer being a slob. Well, people would rather not know uh, so they don't have to do anything. Remember, we're in a society where people for centuries have paid their priests and rabbis even to pray for them. Yeah. Okay. So we don't really want to do anything. Uh, And, of course, you know, you do have a lot of violent idiots in this country who want to war with anybody. Uh, And if they had to know the truth about 9-11, then they couldn't be rallying behind these wars that we started with two countries that had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. 
Uh, so there's a lot of reasons. One of the experts I had on my show is the reason most people buy the official story is because most Americans are ignorant when it comes to math and science, so they know they can get away with it. And that's why they want to keep the schools dumbed down. Uh, of course, and that's why, you know, you got fluoride in your water. It's why you have, you know, 250 million prescriptions a year for uh, antidepressants in America. Is why, you know, they're shooting our kids with these vaccines, the poisons in our food, the chemtrails, poisons. It's all about mind control and keeping people dumb, like dumb animals, but it's also a choice. Choosing to do nothing is a choice. That's what I tell people. You know, when they give you that, you know, I should be able to go to heaven or get my rewards because I lived a fairly good life. I didn't do anything illegal, but that doesn't matter. You chose to do nothing, yeah. and that is a decision. You know, when my grandchildren who, you know, now are, you know, getting up in years, so they, they are fully aware of what I do. But I did not want to be one of those people that when my grandchildren are inheriting a planet that looks like a Mad Max movie, say to me, you know, what did you do while all this shit was going down? Why didn't you do something to stop it? You know, I'm doing everything I know how to do. When I leave this planet, I'm leaving with clean hands. Yeah. And my short answer, willfully ignorant. Yeah, and that's the way it's been created. With Bill Maher and people like him, he doesn't write his own material, even though he may look like he does, and he still has to answer to the people that are paying right. his salary. Yeah. But look at this guy with WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. Everybody wanted to make him a hero. I even discussed that with Jesse Ventura, because his new book makes him look like a hero. And I said, Jesse, did you know that Julian Assange totally ridicules the entire 9-11 truth movement and says that we're all crazy? And Jesse's reaction was, then that means he's not real. And I said, right, so he's no hero. You're the first person to say that. Now, you said something interesting in the beginning of that. And uh, I'm working on this new theory that consumerism is an offshoot of Catholicism. Because it, it seems to me that it's the same mindset. Or maybe it's it works on the same part of the brain where you're, you kind of have to embark on this really narrow, null responsive mindset. And to me, like you said, it used to be in days past and still today that you paid your priest to pray for you. And now, th again, that just that, that made my eyes just go big because, again, like I say, I was just working on this, on this new theory. What do you think about that, about consumerism being an offshoot of Catholicism? and be in the same mindset. I don't know that it's the same as Catholicism to me. Um, I think the whole idea of capitalism is just another form of communism. So, you know, in a communist country, you, you get less stuff, and here you get more stuff, but either country still have no freedom, and they still own every dollar you earn. When I was a young girl, I had gone to Italy, and we went to the Vatican, and I will tell you, I was scared shit walking through the Vatican. Really? I was disgusted when I walked through the Vatican. Uh, I was terrified, and then when I saw the priest in those glass coffins in the bottom of the place, that was like the grand finale, but all I felt in there was dark energy. Yep, same but here. But I looked at all the ornate gold trim, the, the crystals, yep. the gems, yep. all this, and people outside the Vatican homeless and yep. begging for money in the street. That's why and I, I immediately discussing. saw the falsehood of every religion. Religions are like any other corporation. The people at the top live like, you know, pigs in in, in their uh in their consumerism, et cetera, and everybody else is sucking wind. Sort of like America today. Okay? We got the top one percent has all the money and the rest of us are getting a shaft. Uh, so all these systems of control, you know, Napoleon had said it uh, best. He said religion was invented to keep the poor from murdering the rich. <laughs> I like that. That's an excellent quote. And then there were someone when I was young that made sense to me, and I still use them, that religion is a have for the have-nots. <laughs> and you know what, if you really think about it, religion is the best scam on earth. Because no matter what religion, you have to live an austere life, give your money to the church, your rules are, you know, when you can have babies, how you can have sex, all this crap based on the promise of something wonderful after you die. It's the perfect scam. It sure is. And people that buy into that, you know, I've, to I've told people for years, there's a huge difference between being religious and being spiritual. 
Oh, God. See, same thing. I've been saying that for years. You go back to any of my shows and you'll probably hear that exact same sentence.